Hi, everyone. I'll invite you to come grab a seat. I know people are still registering, uh, but we're going to get started. We have a really packed agenda today, so we want to maximize our time. Thanks. I'm Ashley Casvan. I'm the Director of Data Architecture and Innovation. I've had the pleasure of being both uh, part of the open government team and also the development of an open source team uh, within CIOB at Treasury Board. So we've done lots of great open work for the past few years and we're so excited to see this amount of people in the room today. So thank you. I'm just going to go through a few logistics and then I'm going to turn it over to our CTO Mark who's going to get us started for the day. So for those of you that are sitting in the back, that's the non-film zone. So if you guys didn't sign uh, your name away at the door, you can sit back there if you'd like. Um, but everybody else moving forward uh, from these chairs on the ground, we are filming that so just please be aware of that. Um, today, as I mentioned, is a really busy agenda. We have work that are part workshops that are going to happen down here and also on the second floor upstairs. A few housekeeping items. If you do have any questions throughout the day, um, you can find the people with volunteer badges. You can see some over here. And uh, over in the back, they'll be able to address any questions that you have. There's washrooms located on the side over there and behind me, behind the curtain. We will be having coffee at the break. And uh, it'll be located at the station where there's some juice. And that's been provided to us today by Statistics Canada. So thank you so much. Other than that, I'm going to turn it over to Mark, who's going to uh, open up the day. Thanks. Last time I did this, this was exactly when it froze. There we go. <laughs> uh, good morning. Welcome, everyone. Uh, welcome to Open First Day. Uh, as Ashley mentioned, my name is Mark Briard. I'm the Chief Technology Officer for the Government of Canada. Uh, it's incredible to see both familiar and new faces here today. Uh, we're, we're super thrilled with the turnout. Um, I always like to start with a question. Uh, by way of a show of hands, how many people here are GC employees? Excellent. Uh, and how many are open source software or hardware vendors? Companies. Excellent. And everyone else is a consultant? <laughs> no? <laughs> Interested parties? <laughs> excellent, excellent. Excellent. Well, welcome, everyone. Uh, so we're, we're very happy to, uh, to see everyone here today. Uh, following on the heels of the AI Day and the Cloud Day, today is the latest in our series of disruptive technology days aimed at informing, educating, and growing our technology efforts on our path to digital government. Uh, we're very happy to announce, by the way, that just this week uh, the digital standards were published online, so I do encourage you to take a look at them. And one of those standards is to be open, use open software, open standards, open data. Uh, so these are things that we're actually building into uh, what we hope will become the DNA of IT in the government. Uh, with over 300 uh, participants expected to attend today, I think it's clear that there's a lot of interest in the topic. It's great that we're taking the time to share information and learning from one another. Uh, since we've been sold out for over a week and want our colleagues across the country to participate, we've set up a web stream for virtual participation. Uh, so welcome to those who are joining us online as well. I'm looking forward to seeing the outcomes from today's events. Uh, from the diverse agenda with special guests like Roy Fielding and Kristen Burgard, to the participation with, uh, sorry, to the partnership with One Team Gov, to host today's unconference, it's clear that there's growing interest in Canada's involvement and participation in open source. Uh, this year we've made huge strides to foster more growth, development and use of open source software and tools across the GC. Uh, this started with a decision by the Enterprise Architecture Review Board in January to adopt an open first agenda. Uh, this means that we have committed as a government to use open source software and tools wherever and whenever possible. Following that important decision, in February, we launched the Open Source Advisory Board in partnership with industry. The Advisory Board has been working on the case for open source, a working document that is both a business case for using open source solutions and an implementation strategy that examines the technology, people, and rules that will have to be addressed to make open solutions more successful in the GC. 
Throughout my career, I've had lots of opportunities to work with open source solutions, from the early days when Linux and Java were the new thing, to the unbelievable myriad of solutions that are available to us today. I've always struggled with defining why open source should be given preferential treatment, believing simply that the tools and solutions should simply be selected based on what gets the job done best. Basically, selecting software on its merits. And this is maybe the software developer, me coming out, but I always believe that the, you need to use the right tool for the right job. But today, as I look across the landscape of the GC's technology footprint, I see a tremendous amount of legacy software. Software that requires continuous maintenance and support, usually only available from one vendor. Hardware that can't be evergreen because the legacy software that's running on it can't be upgraded. Systems that can't talk to each other because the software is not compatible. These are the th key things we need to consider when we build solutions that will be around for 20, 30, and even 40 years. And I have many, many examples of that. Uh, so as you can see, there's more, technology than what function there's more to technology than what functionality brings to the table. We have to think about the big picture. We have to consider supportability, interoperability, upgradability. In the lingo, this is the true total cost of ownership. And we have to make sure that we take that into account. But even if the case is strong and we wanted to shift everything to more open solutions, we need the people who understand how to build these solutions. Just, by, just as bad as it is to, be, uh, to have vendor lock-in for support costs, if we can't build and maintain our systems, we will not become self-sufficient. So we need to train our people. We need to start investing in experimental solutions that develop our collective skills not just in developing these solutions, but for operating them in our environments. The cloud gives us an opportunity to use these experimental zones like never before. So today is a big step down this road. Uh, today is going to be an exciting day filled with lots of information, but we also want you to take this opportunity to provide us with feedback on opportunities and challenges you see for open source. For all my colleagues in the GC, if you're an open source aficionado, I challenge you to find one colleague who isn't, and start introducing them to the world of open source. Help them get their hands dirty. And if you are new to the open source ecosystem, welcome. I challenge you to build something. Get your manager to give you some time and a cloud account and start building something you've never tried before. You'll be amazed at what you can do with $1,000. So thank you again for your participation and I hope everyone has a great day.